What's up, amigos? It's the Project Maker Minute with Chris Lewitt. As you may know, I'm the former number one for Cornell University, pro circuit player, elite junior development coach, and author and educator, author of The Secrets of Spanish Tennis and The Tennis Technique Bible. So I told you guys I've been coaching my three-year-old Ocean. It's my my last child, my fourth, and uh, my my angel. She's uh, three years old. And so I'm, I'm learning and I'll be sharing with you guys some insights on how to coach kids that young. And I, as I mentioned, I normally start with kids at five or six, but Ocean is three. And so one of the things that I did with her is I, I have Alexa on the court and I play children's music, which I think is, is great for her because it keeps her engaged. Uh, I think a lot longer than a typical three-year-old might be engaged in in a tennis class. So we, we I can play her favorite songs on Alexa. I can play uh, kids music or like Disney music or whatever, you know, anything that any songs that she likes. I notice that she stays uh, with with an exercise or she, she's more engaged and less likely to like run off the court and go get a snack or something. And so I just would submit that to you guys that using music, I've talked about music as a positive way to help teaching and I think that music on the tennis court is really, really valuable. And in this case, with young kids, you can play uh, some type of uh, engaging kids music that keeps them motivated and interested in the lesson. The other thing that I've noticed working with a three-year-old is, is I've told you guys, you don't want to, to separate the racket from the player. I'm a big believer when you're teaching young kids, whether they're three or four or five, or six. I, I do work with a lot of five to seven year olds. Um, and I don't have as much experience with younger than five. So I'm learning as I go here. But you don't want to separate the racket from the player. You want the player to be holding the racket, swinging the racket, manipulating the racket. I'm a really big believer in that to maximize the efficiency of learning. And when you when you divorce the racket from the player, at a young age, I think the, the rate of learning is slower. Like when you're just doing like ball skills or catching skills, throwing and catching, uh, things like that, and basic agility things. I think you, you the rate of improvement is a lot slower. And I'm assuming that, or, or my presumption or my assumption is that those kids should get that. They should get that somewhere else, not not during a, a you know 30 minute or 45 minute block of tennis training, which is typical for, for that age. You know from two three and four years old so music have the kids use the racket like manipulate the racket from from day one from the first minute or two of class the other thing is i'm finding it's very hard to toss the ball to the player and have them get a productive swing a productive hit so i'm experimenting with like putting the ball on a cone like a low cone the ball just sits there like kind of like a t-ball situation or with like even balloons so, or just softballs, foam balls. Um, even a drop feed is hard for my daughter to hit. So I'm trying to set up the ball like kind of on a tee, on a cone, and I'm hoping that she can graduate soon to where she can like track the ball well enough to actually hit it when I toss it to her or if I drop it to her. But I really want her to swing and get stronger and develop those neuromuscular connections. I want her, her literally her grip to get stronger. I want her arms to get stronger. I want her to use her core muscles, things like that. And I want her to be able to chase down a ball and hit it, but she's just not there. She's only three. So uh, that's something else that I learned is try to try. If you, you want the kids to make a lot of swings, like literally a lot of swings. So using like a T-ball setup, anything or, or balloons, anything where something that's easy for them to hit and that that they can make contact with is going to help get more swings rather than just saying, oh, you, you're not able to hit the ball and let's just do some like tossing and catching or, or other kind of like very, very rudimentary athletic skills. I think it's very important to like have the racket in the kid's hands and have them doing stuff with the racket, manip preferably swinging and swinging, swinging relatively hard to develop uh, their body. So that's some insights from working with my, my daughter. Um, music, use the racket. Try to try to teach the, the young kids something, uh, you know, try to teach them something technical, even at even at a young age. Try to give them some some basic techniques that will help them. Don't just give up, like try to press a little bit, even though it should be a fun lesson. Don't make it just fun. It You've got to try to like you want to 
advance their technique. So whether that's how they're holding it, getting the grips right, how they're extending through the ball, how, how they're swinging, like the swing path from low to high, even with a two, three or four year old, I believe in keeping it relatively technical, albeit according to their age and ability to like follow instruction. I don't think it should just be play time and um, fun time only. It should, there should be, it should be fun, of course, because it's a little tiny kid just, just, just getting introduced to the game. It's just, it just introduction, you know, it's initiation. But at the same time, the, the there should be the elements of technique that you're, that actually, that you're, you're building. And that's going to create a little bit of friction. You're going to have to press a little bit. You're going to have to push against a young kid who's trying to, you know, just they're kind of wild and giggly and they're doing whatever they want. You're going to have to be a firm as a teacher with with little guys and girls. Guys, if you like this Project Maker Minute, please consider watching my big show, The Project Maker Show. It's our big podcast. We go deeper into different subjects in junior development, technical development, Spanish tennis. Check it out. Also, please consider subscribing. We are growing our channel. We're going to surpass 3,000 subscribers. We're going to get to uh, uh, Mr. Beast level very soon. Uh, just kidding. But we are you know, growing slowly and steadily, and I appreciate you guys supporting the channel. I'll see you guys on the next program.